Okay, first problem. I, I'm going through some of the classic problems. I'm looking at translation into and from German, uh, from any other language, your favorite language, although some examples, probably most, are actually in English. And I've given some French there for anybody who has struggles with, with the English. Okay, first example is a wonderful term, Gemeinde. How would you translate Gemeinde just as a word? Help me, please, on my far left. Gemeinde. No idea. Keine huh? Ahnung. Okay. On my far right. Gemeinde. Please, sir. You, looking at your beautiful black laptop. Ah, I'm just asking you what the term Gemeinde means. Ge Gemeinde. G-E-M-E-I-N-D-E. -E. Gemeinde. Thank you. Very good. Community. Sound good? Community. All right. Now we have some sentences. We want to see if we can translate it as community. Okay? Lock that in. Wichtigste demokratische Organ in einer Gemeinde ist die Vertretung der Bürger der Gemeinderat. Okay? And we could translate that as uh, the mysterious lady behind the mysterious gentleman. Can you see it there? Yeah, give me a translation. Just try. Hey, who's doing that? Oh, good. Yes, I was shooting for her, but you're fine. The most important democratic organ. Yes? Burger, anybody? Citizens, thank you. Well done. The community council. Does this sound good to everybody? You all agree? We can use community here. Yeah? Sorry? Organ sounds like a heart or a lung or something. It's sort of a uh, uh, democratic body or organization or institution. Uh, body, I like myself here. Organ would pass. Okay. But, yeah. Now, I'm not so sure because I took this from the website of a... Of a... Of a... Uh, it's like a small town, okay, an administrative unit. And in English, there is no such administrative unit as a community. Uh, community is a sociological term for people coming together, but you don't have communities in English. You have, yes, please, help me. Sorry? County, depending on what country you're in. In Ireland, they have counties. All right, and there's Orange County in California, so they might have them there somewhere. Okay, some English speaking countries have counties, very good, but not all. So, oops, all right, any other suggestions? What's father stand? Oh, no, that's that's not fair. There's another, I was doing all this, this. this. Good film done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the girl. Yes. Yeah, well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> You've made his day. Okay. Good mind. Here we are. Okay. We're on this one. All right. Um. Yeah. So we're in this problem that Gemeinde has a, a general sense. One of the recurrent problems in all translating is this, that terms have general meanings, loose meanings, because communication is loose in general, okay? And sometimes technical meaning, and it can be the same word or phrase. And this is the whole game of terminology and phraseology. And when it's technical, sometimes the two societies just don't match. That's why you translate, because they're different. Now, this is a classical headache, because Gemeinde is a, an administrative term in the German language and not in English. I need a solution. Community is not it. County is not it, because counties don't exist anywhere. Yes, please. Municipality is really nice, and it's the one I use sometimes. Okay, uh, why? Because municipality um, in European discourse 
covers all the smaller units of administration. It's already a superordinate for something at about this level. Uh, okay, so municipality is actually very good because it can be administrative and general at the same time. Any other suggestions? Okay, a similar one that I sometimes use, I, I've translated tons of economics and sociology and all sorts of rubbish like this uh, all the time. District is one of my favorite words because a district is technical but it can also be of any particular, it's not of any particular size. It can be a little district or a big district. Municipality or district. These, these are your stock in trade, these terms that can pass as being technical but are not too specific for you to be wrong yeah? when we're doing our risk management. Royal baby, zwei ist geboren. You see, I'm getting topical things that you'll be interested in. So freut sich die Twitter-Gemeinde über Kate's Baby. Twitter-Gemeinde here is Twitter community, I think. Here, or anything general. Okay? The community is general enough. Here, it's not technical. So you've got the the, obviously, the two different levels. Community works sometimes, uh, but other times you need something uh, a little more. Uh, that, that sounds as though it's technical without being. And then here, herzlich willkommen auf der Webseite der Gemeinde Schwarzenberg, which I think is in Switzerland. Schwarzenberg. What do you want to call Schwarzenberg? Anybody? Sorry? Tom? Village. village, wouldn't they say Dorf? Wouldn't they say Stadt? Uh, Dorf? I don't know. I haven't been there. Has anybody been to Schwarzenberg in, in the Schweiz? Yeah. Uh, any idea? No solutions. Um, it's, it's a bit more specific, okay, because this is one particular. I mean, the first one concerns a model of how town or city halls operate in the German system. Here we've got this actual place, and you could go in and find out how many people are there, and then just figure out if it's a village or a town or a small city, okay, but hey, that's a lot of work, that's a lot of effort. Or, leave it out. Welcome to the website of Schwarzenberg. Hey, <laughs> you're not wrong. Nobody will notice. Nobody will care. Oh, and if you think it is important, I mean, uh, write to them. Ask them, hey, what do you want? You know, if your client is the, the Gemeinde Schwarzenberg, uh, then you'd ask the client to say, look, is it okay if I just leave this one out? Because it's a website. You want to welcome people. You don't want technical stuff in there that's going to upset them. Okay? Strategic commission, ladies and gentlemen, solves a lot of problems very fast. Just don't tell anyone outside of our small Gemeinde. I would like you now to translate these two sentences. Uh, sorry. One or the other. If you don't like English, do the French. It's not going to help you. Uh, I would like you to write your translation. I have to correct myself. I, I presented an overview of the translation profession, right, in a previous lecture. And last week uh, at a conference, somebody came up to me and said, you left out the most important thing. It's a woman who has a company, a translation company in Paris, and an American colleague who works for a bank in Geneva. And they said, you, you forgot to say that translators in Europe earn over 100,000 euros a year. Okay? And I said, how many of you are there? We don't know. But some do. Okay? So I, I left that out. You know how they earn 100,000 euros a year and above? Well, living in Geneva, working for a big bank, okay? Working on high-risk techs and situations of confidentiality, so they have to be trusted, 
and they go fast. Eh. Fast. All right. Uh, Madrileños, if you could, you could Google that, it's the people who live in Madrid. Okay? How did you render that? Blonde girl sitting right there. There's only one blonde girl. That's you, yes. Madrileños. Whichever language you're translating into. Madril. Leni. Okay, that's Italian, right? Good. This is text is in English, right? Why have they put a Spanish word in the English text? Look, they're madrilistas. Oh, I know that because I'm for Barca. So that's the enemy. Okay, no, the madrileños, if you look up the Spanish, they're the people who live in Madrid. Okay, madrilistas are the ones who support Real Madrid. Bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, you, you have the choice. You can put it in German or Italian or Polish or whatever language you're working into. But think, why does the author use the Spanish term here? Yes, please. Yes, there is. People who live in Madrid. It's longer. It's a bit boring. And this, I mean, in the context, you can work out what it means for people who live in Madrid, and it gives local color. You know, like people write about Spain and they talk about paellas and fiestas and siestas. That's the other thing they use all the time. Okay. Uh, just to put. Now, translators tend to think that we have to translate everything into the target language, okay? It's all in Italian, all in German, all in Polish. Not so. You can use the local terms if the context will carry its meaning, okay? Which I think you can then. This example is given by Newmark as one where you can do two translations. You could put... Uh, uh, the most important democratic body in the Gemeinde, and in brackets, small administrative unit. Okay? If, if it's t highly technical, you can do both. You can put the German word and explain it in English. Here, it's a newspaper article. Explanations are a bit unworldly, but you could say Madrileños, the people who live in Madrid, if you want to. You can have two translation solutions if you're unhappy with just one. It's possible. You are not required to only go into one language. You can mix languages because people do. And you're not required to just have one solution for one problem. Take two. Why not? Okay. Surprisingly, irrational or something, unworldly. That's a, that's a lovely concept. Unworldly. What... Any alter what have you got? So I'll give you some suggestions. Yes, please. Weltfremd, I love that. <laughs> I have no idea what, I've never heard that before, but it's it, it's it, you know. <laughs> Foreigner in the world. Because I was, anybody, any, you had Realität fremd, which is nice too, yes? I, I don't think it's, um, it's a bad quality. In the context, you know, they're just not as, as. Look, I put it into French. I didn't know how to do it, and I could think what what he's talking about is they're not materialist. You know, they go out singing and dancing all night and getting drunk, and they got no money. Weltfremd ist das oder Realität fremd? But naive? No, they're just having a party. So. I have to remind myself why I live in Spain. Please translate this, quickly. You've done these texts thousands of times. Quickly, translate this into your favorite language other than German. What are the problems in this text? Uh, there are many, actually. It looks simple, but it's quite to say. Yes, please. Sorry? Oh, let's get to that. Third. That's the easy one. The hard ones are first. Let's go bit by bit, okay? Forname. Nachname. What have you got? Yeah. 
I have to take your word for that. Okay. English. People who worked into English? Yes, please. Name and surname. But in English, help me out, major speakers. My surname is my name. Yes, sorry? First name. Given name. Lovely. Okay. Um, years ago, it used to be your Christian name. And then we realized that not everybody who speaks Chris, uh, English is a Christian. Uh, these days it's usually given name, family name. Uh, in fact, that, that's the best way to do it. You can have first name if you like. But, but it's more correct to have given name, the one you were given when you were born, like Royal Baby Zwein. Did, did you get a name? I, mean, I don't know. Uh, and then family name. Sometimes called surname, S-U-R, okay? Uh, but most forms these days have given name, family name. Other problems there? You can sort that out in your own cultures. Land. Now, is the land Österreich? Or the Länder in Deutschland? Like Niedersachsen. And... Is there a possible ambiguity there or not? Okay, so it's country. Yeah, so country, some people have got other words in their languages, but that's not problematic. The address, now I've got Adresse Straße, but the, Straße, the street is part of the address in English. So what's going on? Help me. How can I solve that problem? It doesn't make sense in German either. Ah, but then the Postleitungszahl is not got a comma. And then, oh, okay. I mean, I would be happy, address, colon, street, Postleitungszahl, what's that? What, yeah, what is that in English? Okay, oh, there's three, postcode, postal code, or zip code. Which do you want? Why? It's American. Okay. Uh, we have to know where this text is going, all right, uh, in order to solve that one. Although, if you put zip code, the rest of the world sort of understands it. Uh, but be careful. If you put postcode, that works in Australia. Postal code might work in Britain with postcode. I'm really not too sure. But be careful, because these countries have different words for mobile number. Huh? So if you put zip code, which is American, you may not want to put a mobile number. You might put a cell phone number, a cell number. Okay? So don't mix up the places you're sending this text to. Okay, and then ought, ought is really hard. Uh, city, town, village. Uh, this is a nice place to put municipality. Uh, word that serves for all purposes. Okay. Yeah, well, isn't the Strasse a location? And the, uh, municipality is okay. Or, or town... Often the, the English forms have town, comma, city. Okay? The way to translate this is decide what country you're sending this to, Google it in English, guess it, Google it, and you'll find the form and copy it if it looks reasonable. Okay? Uh, you get a global solution just by doing some intelligent Googling. Now, for the second one, what's the problem here you were saying? Do we translate Gymnasiumstrasse? Who did? Gymnasium Street. <laughs> why not? Yes, why not? Uh, because maybe this person will look in Google Maps for the street and won't find it. So just for Gymnasium Street. Try it. 
Go to Google Maps, write Gymnasium Street, I bet you find it. Huh? Google, Google is for all kinds of people. All right, the simple logic here is if you've got the street address, it's because somebody is sending something to that place. So you're not going to translate it because the person who has to deliver the message will not be able to. Yes, please. Ah, there you go, you see. Google outsmarts us all. All right. Yes? Yeah, but does it have a translation center? <laughs> On the other hand, did you translate Centrum für Translationswissenschaft? Yes or no? Why? Why that and not the other one? Okay. <laughs> okay, those are all good reasons. For me, working fast, I would go into the website, and when I go into the website, I see it written in English. So, so these people want this English to be used, but they don't want it used for the address for practical reasons. Okay, so translate the first, but not the second. Problem solved. Two seconds, move on. Ah, here you go. You guys suffered Eurovision, I hear. Okay. I have a 10-year-old son, so I had to watch it. Translate this into German or into whatever language you like. I, I was intrigued at how popular music still uses rhyme. All the songs rhymed. Huh? One of the most basic of poetic devices. Have a go. Try to put that into your favorite language other than English. Do you know the song? Do you want me to play it? Oh, well, it's not there. Okay, you'll have to sing it to yourself. Um, I had a go. Are you trying in Russian? Yeah? Try it. Come on. I did it into French. It was pretty good, I thought. Then I translate that back into English. It's pretty cool. Okay, a bit of creativity. If you sit the Helden unseres Zeit, then you just need any word that rhymes with Zeit. There must be thousands. I only need one. Okay, um, What's more important here is, is not what you get, but how you get it. So the, the technique is to realize that the lyrics to these songs are incredibly banal. And sometimes there's just one message. So the first one, you've got to have heroes, okay? You can't get rid of that. But you could change that. If sight doesn't come to you, you haven't got anything there, then you can change it to hier und jetzt, which rhymes with hetzt. And how do you sing that? Not a, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just read your translation then. It's a bit complicated in the second, but you could take some words out and get it good. And what did you have, please? Can you shout it? Mit die Teufel unserer, unseres Geists. Okay, so you've got an imperfect rhyme with Zeit und Geist, but it's close enough for popular music. Because <laughs> really, come on folks, time does not rhyme with minds. Okay, if, uh, okay uh, thank you very much for those two people and to those who tried. Now, this next one, I really want you all to try, please. Well, I was amazed to learn that Australia is in Europe or in Eurovision with, with a really profound song which you might translate. Forget tomorrow. Is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay. Ah. 
This is Australia's contribution to European culture. What you've been missing for all these years, suddenly you've got, I don't want tomorrow, oh baby, tonight's so good, tonight's so good. This is one tough act to follow. Rhyme. Okay. Tonight's so good, forget tomorrow, but you said that before. We can do tonight again, doesn't rhyme. You can translate this, all you need is one rhyme. You have to rhyme tomorrow with follow. Okay? But it might occur to you that this entire line here is gratuitous. It's only there because it rhymes. So get any word for tomorrow and then find something that rhymes with it. Off you go. It's not easy, is it? Ich will kein Morgen? Please get something you can sing. So to put you in the mood. Translate. 